Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today I am back with another PlayStation 4 Hidden Gems video. Man, it has been a while since I've done one of these specifically for the PlayStation 4. It's actually been since 2018. Can you believe that? Man, how time flies. Now, I know the term hidden gems can be somewhat of a confusing term, and the way I look at them is that I kind of look for games that are relatively unknown, that are good, that most people don't know about. So that's kind of how I build this list up. Uh, also, not all of these games are gonna be exclusive to the PlayStation 4, although some of them definitely are, but some of these have come out also on PC or maybe the Switch. I'll put that on the little title card that comes up for each game so you'll know. And the good news is most of these games, maybe all of them, will play on your PlayStation 5, which is cool. So if you happen to have one of the newer consoles, well, you can go back and play some of these games, often with maybe a higher frame rate or maybe a higher resolution. So let's get started. So the first game I wanna talk about is called Alienation, and this one happens to be a PlayStation 4 only game at least as of the making of this video. Now, as you can see here, this is an isometric twin stick shooter created by the awesome developer House Marquee. And I wanted to include it in this video because I've used some of this gameplay footage in some of my other videos when I'm talking about twin stick shooters or arcade games that I like. And inevitably, people will always ask me, what is that game? Uh, it's one of those games that definitely you know stands out. It looks gorgeous, but also people who are into twin stick shooters or just action games, they want to know what this is. And, and I'm just so happy to be able to talk about it now. Now, what's cool about this game is that House Marquee has crammed a ton of stuff into this. So it's not just a you know, typical simple twin stick shooter, although there's definitely elements of that. But uh, as you see here, there are also a lot of RPG elements to this as well. Uh, you have multiple character classes that you can choose to play as. You have tons of weapon and armor upgrades. And as you see by this footage here, I'm currently going at it alone in this game, which is nice. You can play it as a single player game and go through the entire campaign shooting a bunch of you know, uh, aliens and enemies and stuff like that. Or really this game I think is best if you can get three other, you know, friends to join you uh, simply because there is just so much going on. And honestly, it can be overwhelming if you play this with just one person. So it's nice to get three other people in there to, you know, to basically watch your back. And originally the multiplayer was online only, but they have released several updates and patches for this to add local co-op as well, which is awesome if you have a friend over sitting on the couch. This is definitely a really cool game. As you can see here by this footage, it looks and plays awesome. It's a gorgeous game. So if you haven't checked out Alienation, give it a shot. Next up is an arcade racing game I've been wanting to talk about for a while now. That is On Rush, and this is also available on the Xbox One. So basically what's going on in this game is that you have two teams pitted against each other, each with six racers on each side. And what's cool about this game is that there is no finish line. This isn't like a traditional racing game where you're trying to get to the finish line. Instead, what you're doing is you are constantly battling each other for points uh, just trying to outmaneuver and basically best the other team. And there is always action in this game. That's one of the things that really sets it apart, that even whenever you crash and you are brought back in, it's almost like you're just being you know, added back into like a Call of Duty multiplayer match where you're just dropped right back into the middle of the action. You are never racing alone in this game because like I said, it's just a constant circle going around trying to just basically get as many points as possible. I was playing this game capturing the footage the other night and it really struck me that this is kind of like the ultimate version of Burnout's Road Rage mode where you're just basically trying to take out as many of the opponents as possible and you're constantly boosting and it's just absolute insanity 24 seven in this game. It's out of control, it's so much fun. So if you like arcade racing games and you kind of miss this style of them where it's just over the top fun, constant action, man, you have to pick up a copy of On Rush. It's fantastic. <laughs> 
Next up is a game I'm very excited to talk about in this video. It is called Blood Roots. So basically what's going on in this game is that you are this guy who is seeking revenge on the person that left you for dead. Actually, you're, you're seeking revenge on the guy and everyone associated with him. And you just go on this murderous rampage. And when I say anything, I mean it. You can pick up splinters of wood that have fallen from a house. You can pick up wagon wheels. You can pick up cabbage or, or carrots to throw at enemies. But then you also have a bunch of the traditional weapons like swords and axes and things like that. And each of them will have their own statistics and uses both in combat and also outside of combat. So for instance, here you see that I've picked up an ore from a rowboat. And yeah, you can spin around and whack dudes with it and take them out. Uh, or you'll actually need to use that to kind of pull vault over uh, these big gaps or to get to higher levels and basically continue on you know, with your quest. One of my favorite things is to just jump on a barrel and then mow over dudes. So yeah, it's endlessly creative with what you can do in this, this game. It's, it's super fun to kind of just mess around with the world and see what works and what doesn't. Sometimes you're surprised. Sometimes you just laugh out loud because it's completely silly. Now the game is difficult and you are meant to die, but thankfully the reloads or restarts of the level are pretty much instantaneous, which is very nice. It's the kind of game where if you die, it's because it's because of something that you did or didn't do. It's never really cheap or frustrating in that regard. So definitely check out Blood Roots. It's awesome. Next is, well, Next Machina. This came out on the PlayStation 4 and also on Steam. And this is another game by House Marquee. This is yet another attempt that they had at making a really awesome twin stick shooter, uh, just like the first game we talked about called Alienation. Now, the reason why I wanna talk about this one, cause it seems a little bit maybe redundant here having two twin stick shooters by the same developer in the same video, but this one's very different. And sometimes it's actually kind of polarizing. Not everybody likes this game. And what I find is that typically people go one way or the other. They either like Alienation, but not this one, or perhaps you're like me, where actually I prefer Next Machina a little bit over Alienation. And as you can see by this footage here, it's a very different graphic style as well. This game plays a little bit more like say Robotron in the arcades or maybe Smash TV. Uh, just has a, a little bit more of an arena style vibe to it. Um, and again, I think that's one of the reasons why I like this game. It's a little bit more pick up and play. There's not quite as much going on, you know, as far as the RPG elements to it. As matter, This game really doesn't have quite the RPG elements as Alien Nation. Uh, plus, as you can see by the footage here, it's a showcase for really cool voxel technology. The way that those pieces break apart in this, this game, it's just gorgeous to watch. Also, this game has a dash feature that is key to staying alive in this game, where you see me doing all the time here, where basically you have this dash that you, it's, it's a move that you can do. So when it gets really overwhelming, you dash out of the way and then you continue on just blowing everything up. And then it basically slowly builds up. It's only a couple seconds long, so you can't do it all the time. It's very strategic, but you, you're, you're doing it every probably five or 10 seconds. So that's kind of one of the things that really sets this game apart from some of the other twin stick shooters that you may have played. So yeah, if you like twin stick shooters, you gotta check out Next Machina. And now for something completely different. This is a game called Late Shift. And as you can see by this gameplay footage here, this is a full on interactive full motion video game. So first of all, I have to say, like many of you, I've grown sort of nostalgic for those FMV games from the 90s and early 2000s. You know, these were all the rage back in the day when CD-ROMs and DVDs were just brand new in all of these different consoles and, you know, PC. And, you know, some of them were better than others. Most of them were crap, to be honest, or painfully bad. But, you know, every once in a while, a game comes along that kind of resurrects that style and Late Shift does that and it does it really well. Now, unlike other FMV games, especially some of the classic ones, the prompts that come up where you have to make a decision 
for the character and move the story forward. In this game, it doesn't pause it. And it used to do that in a lot of games. And so that's something actually I thought was pretty cool about this because you really have to stay on your toes. You have to make those decisions quickly or the movie will just continue on without you. It basically, I'm not sure which decision it makes, probably just the first one, but it's cool because again, it's always moving forward. Also, it looks like a decent budget TV show and it has some really good acting and some interesting characters, but I guess I should probably talk about what the, the actual game is about. So you play this parking lot attendant who is on the late shift, hence the name of the game, and then you are unwillingly involved in this high stakes heist that involves some stolen goods, a crime ring, and also maybe, you know, depending on your decision, a potential love interest, ooh. And this game gives you a decent amount of decisions to make. It actually gives you 180 things to choose from as you are playing the game. So you can really guide your character and the story along. So the way that that works out is, is that you can beat this game in about an hour and a half, which is the typical length of a Hollywood movie. And then what happens is that there are seven different endings that you can play with. So yes, the game is fairly short at only an hour and a half long, but you can keep replaying it, uh, you know, making different choices that you might not typically make the first time through to see where that leads you. It really reminds me almost of when I'm playing Mass Effect where you have the, the choices to be nice or not so nice, or maybe a jerk, or maybe, you know, make a decision that is logical or sometimes illogical and just kind of see what happens. So on my second playthrough, that's exactly what I did. I chose all of the options that you really shouldn't play, you know, or choose when somebody's pointing a gun at your face. And it was really funny and very satisfying to see just where the story went when I just, played it wrong. It was awesome. So yeah, if you're like me and you've been missing these full motion video games, definitely check out Late Shift. Next up is a game I've been playing a lot lately. It's called Moons of Madness. So this is a first person survival horror game that has you playing as an astronaut that is stationed on Mars that uh, may or may not be going slightly mad. <laughs> And so as you can see by this footage here, you are going around this Martian space station here, uh, both inside of it and also out, doing some light puzzle solving like you would in, you know, maybe like say a Resident Evil game, especially the newer ones. Uh, but again, it has that survival horror element to it. And what I like about this game is that it starts off fairly kind of realistic. You know, obviously we're not on Mars yet and I don't really know what it's like to be an astronaut, but it has a lot of the things you would do as an astronaut where you're kind of fixing equipment, you are adjusting your air that you have, your reserve air when you're out on the Martian landscape. Um, and then it slowly kind of reveals itself. It kind of slowly gets worse and worse to the point where it's a full on survival horror game. Now, one of the criticisms I have of this game, and it's a slight one, but I do want to mention it, and that is the performance on the PlayStation 4. Uh, it's not great. And actually, I'm using it and capturing this footage on a PlayStation 4 Pro. And every once in a while, the frame rate does dip down. I think it's probably because I'm loading something or there's a delay or something like that. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not super sensitive to that kind of stuff. It doesn't really affect the gameplay, but I just want to mention it because some people definitely don't like it when, you know, the frame rate dips and it does that occasionally when there's a lot of stuff going on. But I definitely like how this game went from kind of just mundane to, wow, what the hell is going on? And I really appreciated that. It didn't waste a whole lot of your time and it got really interesting. I don't want to spoil anything if you haven't played this game, but if you like HP Lovecraft, I think you're gonna dig this. 
Next up is Kentucky Route Zero, the TV edition. And this is a game that I kind of went back and forth as to whether I should include it in a Hidden Gems video because I do feel like that this game is somewhat known. Uh, I had heard of it, but I hadn't played it. And when I did a bit more research, I realized that, yeah, I know that it's it's kind of known, but also I don't think a lot of people had played it, myself included, until I made this video. And once I did, I was like, yeah, this is worthy of this video. So what's going on with this really bizarre game? Well, you are an antique delivery guy that's trying to get to a specific address via this fabled Route Zero in Kentucky. So yes, the, the title of the game is very accurate, although how you get there is really bizarre. Now I read that the creators of this game were very inspired by David Lynch. Uh, I think they are probably inspired by say a fever dream that they maybe had. Maybe they were delirious with the flu or something like that because uh, you know, for such a simple premise, you do some just really odd things in this game. You're, you're cruising around and meeting these interesting cast of characters that may or may not want to help you with your goal. Um, it just seems kind of random and again, very David Lynch-like where you're going, who are these people and what are they doing all the time? It's like I said, it's really bizarre. And you can really tell that by the footage here. I mean, it looks sort of like a traditional point and click adventure game, but you don't have the traditional puzzles that you would in those kind of games. You know. Typically you're trying to find an object to unlock another one that progresses the story. And that's not that's not necessarily the case in this game. I mean, essentially what you're doing is walking back and forth uh, from character to character. And then most of your, your choices that you have come in the form of dialogue. Now what's wild is that there's not necessarily a right or wrong dialogue choice. It's just that often whatever you choose will potentially change the story or maybe how a character interacts with you. And so when I started playing this game, I thought, am I doing it wrong? You know, in these type of games, I'm so used to trying to figure out, okay, what does the developer want me to do to progress the story? But often in this game, again, there isn't a right or wrong answer. And so you almost have to kind of lay back and just sort of let the dialogue happen, let the characters talk. It's a really beautiful, bizarre, sometimes kind of slow moving game. And it's probably not for everybody, but man, is it memorable. All right, guys, well, that is seven more PlayStation 4 hidden gems coming at you today. Now, I would love to know down in the comments what you thought of the list of games that I came up with. Have you played them? Have you not? Uh, what other hidden gems would you like me to cover in future videos? I'm always looking to see what is out there that is relatively unknown and also awesome to play. And as always, guys, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing and take care.